a dominant win, 43 to 20 over Carthage on senior day. North Central head coach Jeff Thorne is on the program to talk about the big win. And we have two offensive linemen on to talk about sandwiches. And we have this week's Cardinal Corner at Myrner Fieldhouse for a charity basketball game. All that and more is next on the Red Zone. Presenting sponsor of the Red Zone is Athletico, the preferred provider of physical therapy and athletic training for North Central College. Welcome into the Red Zone, and head coach Jeff Thorne is on the program. Most dominant win of the season, it looked like from the broadcast booth. Correct me if I'm wrong, but did you see the same thing when you were going through it and on the game tape after? Oh, yeah. You know, every, anytime you're able to run the ball for 314 yards against a team that's given up you know, 90 yards a game on the ground and 231 total yards per game. You feel pretty good about it. I, I was extremely pleased with how we played up front on both sides of the ball. It, it was really a satisfying victory. We'll get to the different components of the game in just a second, but I want to get the approach because you guys were fired up for this game. You mm -hmm. knew that the season in a lot of ways was going to hinge on this game. Did you feel like you guys really came in prepared the way you wanted your team to be? Without question, we had a phenomenal week of practice, mm -hmm. and that's what we're talking to the guys about right now is that you know you see exponential growth. Um, there's a compounding effect when you stack great practices on top of each other for a long period of time. So if we continue to practice the way we did last week, I think this team can really uh, have a lot of fun next <laughs> you know Saturday and hopefully beyond if we can take care of business on Saturday. Let's go back, Austin Brunig. It's not every day that you can break three program records when yeah. you've had some phenomenal running backs come through. But that's what he did. 350 all-purpose yards, 264 rushing yards, five total touchdowns. Puts a big smile on your face. It puts yeah. a big smile on a lot of people's faces. It's pretty special. It's unbelievable. Um, Austin's been terrific all season. We've talked about his speed. Not to take anything away from him, mm -hmm. but that doesn't happen without the guys up front paving the way I mean they're the holes and, and Austin to his credit with his humility he alluded to that I mean we had some pretty sizable holes for him to run through Brock did a great job uh, getting making a couple run checks that that our, our guys up front executed and Austin hit a seam and and then his speed is on display yeah. but you know for him to, to catch the football twice for touchdowns to run the way he did he broke a ton of tackles yep. He really showed some things at the second level that we haven't seen him do a ton in his career in terms of just a little bit of shake mm -hmm. to give the defender a little bit less of his body. Unbelievable performance, and, and that's how you break three school records. <laughs> I've got to ask, just as an offensive play caller, when you have a running back that can catch the ball as effectively as he does out of the backfield, what does that do for the rest of the offensive game plan? It, he's a matchup nightmare. Yeah. You know, most teams have to match up with a running back with a linebacker, and there's... I don't know that there's a single linebacker in Division Three that runs in the four fours, so we're going to have an advantage there. We just our job is to find what formations mm -hmm. uh, where we can get Austin singled up on a linebacker, and we were fortunate enough to do that mm -hmm. uh, with Carthage and you know a couple other times this season. Offensive line, we've talked about their progress. Is this the best game they've had in two or three years? It seems absolutely, <laughs> no question. They were terrific. Uh, they just continue to get better. If you look at our numbers mm -hmm. running the football each week, we seem to be getting more and more consistent. There's a comfort level with what we're doing. I think they've gained a comfort level with Coach Whalen mm -hmm. and the expectations. Uh, they're working harder than, than anybody else in the program, you know, from a position standpoint, our offensive line, our defensive line. Mm -hmm. That's what you have to have, yeah. and uh, we're seeing the results. Brock Rudder. Basically a game manager in a game like this where he can just hand it off to Austin Bruning. But he's still had an efficient day. Uh, is, it, is that a role that you like to see him in, have that kind of nice balance between rush and passing? Well, for sure. I would, I would never refer to, to Brock as a game manager. I mean, he made plays from the very beginning, third play of the game or fourth play. You know, he threw that wheel route to Austin, a great throw. We're able to do the things that we're able to do because teams have to come in and they're concerned about number nine. Yeah. How do we control number nine? Um, and he's doing it with a new cast of characters. So really, uh, what he's done this year has been special. Again, the numbers aren't what they were a year ago 
for a lot of reasons. We're running the football better. That's a big part of that. Yeah. And that's how you go deep in the playoffs, though. Mm -hmm. You've got to have that balance that we've talked about yeah. uh, in, in weeks prior. And then defensively, let's get to this unit. We knew that there was going to be a power run game that was going to present a challenge. Mm -hmm. And you guys almost neutralized that. 70-something yards on the ground. Yeah. The first string running back, 50, 50 yards. He's a six-foot-one, six 220-pound dude. Yeah. You guys stopped him. He runs hard, too. We, we really did a great job. Our interior, uh, Matt Taylor, Imante Logan, uh, Andrew Cray, Tyrone Suggs, when they were able to get in there. And then our linebackers, uh, terrific job. Our two ends did a great job of compressing the run box. So... Just a great job by our front seven, uh, forcing them to become a little bit more one-dimensional than they want to. Uh, great defensive performance. Late in the game, I asked Demonte about this. Tyrone Suggs had a chance at an interception, went down, did three push-ups on the field. Yeah. But it was just that kind of day. You guys looked like you were relaxed and just getting after the, the game plan. Was it fun being in the moment and you know, watching sure. them? Oh, yeah. Anytime you're able to play like that, it's a lot of fun as a head coach or any coach. Yeah. And, and the players, too, when you have that kind of success, when the hard work pays off the way it did mm -hmm. Saturday, it's a lot of fun. And you're able to play loose. Yeah. And you saw that. The guys were playing loose and really just having fun. Last thing I want to get to is the interceptions. Mm -hmm. uh, Tommy Sora came up with his second of the season. So did Matt Sutherland. Yeah. It seemed like they're playing at a pretty high level as well. We've talked about Tommy before. We've yeah. not talked uh, a lot about Matt Sutherland, but Matt has two starts. I'm sorry, three starts now. And he's fourth on our team in tackles, and he's time for the, tied for the team lead in interceptions. He's around the ball all the time. He's always where he's supposed to be. Um, I think I talked about him last week being a two-sport athlete. I, mm -hmm. He's just he's been such a great uh, – uplifter to the team hmm. at a time where we desperately needed it yeah um, great kid too um, we'll go back we'll check the tape we'll review the game and then we'll move forward and we'll, we'll talk about Elmhurst sounds good we're going to take a break check the tape is on its way on the red zone welcome back and now it's time to check the tape This Red Zone segment is sponsored by M&M Rentals. We talked about him a lot in the first segment, and for good reason, and this was kind of the, the pinnacle of the game for him, 78-yard touchdown in which I want to talk about the offensive line because Austin yeah. took care of his business, yep. but they paved the way. Brock makes a great run check here. Uh, it's a blitz we'd prepared for, and uh, our offensive line did a terrific job of covering guys up and then running their feet and open up a seam for Austin, and then he just flat out outruns pursuit angles from their secondary. You see number 25 here is going to have a pretty significant pursuit angle, but Austin's speed, you just can't prepare for it uh, in practice because nobody runs like that at, at our level. So uh, great job all the way around, but that, was that one was really fun to watch because <laughs> you put the time in, you say, okay, when we get this, yeah. and uh, Brock saw it, checked it, the guys executed it, and, and touched down. I talked to Austin after the game. He said, we saw that happen. We went to the play, and as soon as Brock called it, I knew it was a touchdown. Mm -hmm. You're on the 22-yard line. <laughs> you know, not everybody can say that. Yeah. Austin can say that because he just needs to get in the clear. And, and, you know, a guy like me, I'd have been caught 15 yards down the field. But Austin's a little bit different. Now we're going to stick with him because, again, 350 all-purpose yards and five touchdowns, and here's the fifth. And I know you want to spotlight one guy. Great run, but if you watch 55 right there in the, in the right of the screen and, and he finishes his linebacker on the ground, um, that's the kind of effort that we've seen all season long from our offensive linemen. You know, running their feet, staying engaged for six seconds. Mm -hmm. Austin did a terrific job too here. He breaks a, a couple of tackles and drags people into the end zone. But when our, when our team sees that on Sunday, when we're watching film, it sends a message to everybody. Mm -hmm. Like, this is how you play high-level football at the line of scrimmage. And it's rubbed off on everybody both sides of the ball. Uh, Sharmore's really been... You know, he's a freshman doing this stuff, so he's been a critical element to you know, our offensive line making a big jump from a year ago and the work ethic and just his athleticism makes such a difference. I can't wait to get the two offensive linemen on set to, to hear their thoughts as well. Yeah. Um, last play I want to get to is Tommy Sora, and we could have gone with either him or Matt Sutherland. Both mm -hmm. came up with picks, but uh, we went with Tommy. This was a little bit earlier in the game. Did I think nice early job. fourth quarter here. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great job by Tommy sinking into the coverage and you know, getting in the throwing lane there and getting his second interception of the year. 
for a middle linebacker to have those kind of numbers, obviously he's, I think, second in the team in tackles at this point, but also to be a factor in coverage. Mm-hmm. It's got to be kind of nice. It's great. You know, Tom, it's just instincts and speed mm-hmm. and getting himself in the right right position, as, as we've talked about in the past with Tommy. It's, that's He and Matt Sutherland are two peas in a pod. They're always where they're supposed to be, yeah. when they're supposed to be there. They're cerebral players. Um, and then they go and make plays. I want to move the focus to, to Elmhurst. This is the last game of the regular season. You guys go on the road. Um, what kind of challenges are you expecting come Saturday? You know, Elmhurst is a team that's going to play extremely hard. They always have done that. They're having a little bit of a, a down year. Uh, but that doesn't mean that we don't prepare the same way we do every week. They've got some dangerous players. They have an all-conference quarterback that's returning, a uh, freshman receiver that's done some really nice things for them. And defensively, they've got a defense that's different than what we see on a weekly basis. So a little bit more in preparation. But they're going to play hard, they're going to play fast, and they're never afraid of contact. So our guys got to be prepared. I got a quick hit for you. I forgot to prepare you for this one. So okay. I'll give you a second to think about it. All right. And ask these two guys the same one. Is a hot dog a sandwich? No. (laughs) No. (laughs) That's an easy one. I didn't have to prepare for that. Some people will very argue that it is. Say that it is. Really? See, I wouldn't call a hamburger a sandwich either, though. Really? I guess not. I I think of a sandwich as two pieces of bread, and you're putting something together on there. Hmm. We might have to have a more detailed conversation sometime down the road about this. Whenever you want. (laughs) Coach, thanks for swinging by. Good luck against Elmer. Thanks, Kevin. Coming up next, we'll have a couple of offensive linemen joining me. We'll be right back on the Red Zone. What if you could invest in the future? The future of kids, like a stock. Not the kind of stock that's about making money, but a stock for social change. A whole new kind of investment called Better Futures. When you invest, it helps kids go to college. Believe in us, invest in us, watch us grow. My name is Sydney, and I'm your dividend. Welcome back into the Red Zone, and a couple of senior offensive linemen are here. Alec Lacar, Joe Fairley. I can't believe this, that after four years in the Cardinal program, that this is the first time you're sitting on this couch. But welcome, and welcome back. Uh, great senior season. We'll start with Joe. Um, it, it hasn't been capped quite yet, but what a way to have senior day go out in fashion. 350 yards for Austin, 317 rushing yards. Had to be a lot of fun. Oh, yeah, it was a great time. Uh, it was good to get that for Austin. Uh, we kind of let him down a little bit last year. But uh, he's right back at it like his sophomore year. We're going to try and get that uh, offensive player of the year for him. And it was great to do it on senior day, too. I know all of us appreciated it on the line. You guys just seem to be playing at a different level this year. What is the difference? I mean, you've been a part of the starting unit for four years. Is this year just kind of something different about the way that things have kind of progressed? Um, I think our confidence is back. I think we lost some confidence last year. Uh, didn't start off the season too well, and then it kind of bouldered down the hill. You know, yeah. grew, got worse. Uh, this year we just started off confident, and it's yeah. just built uh, up and up. And we're here now, and uh, we got a new sled too, a Crowther sled, and that's really worked <laughs> for us. We like that. <laughs> and then Alec, you guys have three seniors on this line, two younger guys. So it's kind of a fun mix for you to both be teaching and also playing at a high level. Has it been fun to be both a mentor and a, and a high level player? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, you know, just having the new guys, comfortability of the, having the older guys there too, but then also, you know, bringing in new guys and these guys are, uh, you know, Colton and Sharmore are both, you know, very talented and, you know, Sharmore picked up the offense quickly and, you know, Colton, Colton's doing a great job as well. Um, never felt, uh, I noticed this on Saturday, never felt more Comfortable, um, you know. Uh, Joe said, you know, we were, we were really, really confident right now. Y'all look to my left and my right, you know, and um, I just knew I felt confident and that we were going to get the job done. And we were all on the same page, you know. Yeah. It's it's like, you know, you're you're at peak communication when you can communicate without speaking, you know. Mm-hmm. So, um, that, but we do speak, Coach Whalen. I, you know, <laughs> I want to make sure we do talk the line, but uh, you know, just we're on the same page, and it's it's a great feeling. Got to make sure you get that across because I know he likes to have you guys take a lap. We asked him <laughs> yeah. earlier in the year. Um, but, I mean, just from, from week one to now, the production has seemed to steadily climb over the course of the season. Do you guys take a look at those stats as more of an indicator of how you guys are performing? We definitely have that as, um, you know, like as, as benchmarks. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we've been, we've been trying to, we've been setting goals each week on, uh, you know, rushing yards and, and all that you know obviously stats are are one thing you know we want to make sure our performance is good obviously sometimes you know 
The stats won't always show performances, though. You know, um, shows our overall performance, but uh, we definitely look at that as kind of benchmarks and goals to set, and uh, a little bit of how we did. So, yeah. yeah. You, sir, were slapped with a preseason All-American tag. What were your thoughts on that before the season even started? Uh, I, I kind of had a feeling it was coming with the honorable mention last year. Uh, but my goal this year was to get the whole line going as a group, you know, keep Brock healthy, keep Austin healthy. And I know if we have a good season offensively, all the accolades will come with that. So Nine weeks that in, my goal. mission accomplished so far. Yeah. Uh, we haven't even talked about Brock, which is just it kind of is a testament to how good Austin was this last week. Um, but just how special is Brock as a quarterback and as a signal caller? Um, it's amazing. Uh, he's always got us in the right play. Um, he makes the best reads every time. Uh, and he's got a cannon, so it's, <laughs> it's, it makes it easy to play for him. Uh, real fun to block for him. Yeah. Great guy. One of my good friends. So, kind yeah. of a goof is what I've gotten. Yeah. Always fun to be around, though, you know? <laughs> one of those type of personalities. Yeah. As an offensive line, you like to know where your quarterback is, but Brock is sneaky. He can kind of move <laughs> in around in the pocket a little bit. Um, do you guys talk about his mobility at, at any point? Um, I, he definitely likes to brag about it when he does have those few does occasions. He? he does. He does. But, uh... I mean, it's just like, uh, we, I mean, I guess, I guess we don't really talk about it just because, you know, when he, when he has those moments, he takes it, but he's not like, you know, he's not like a natural scrambler, which is, yeah. we, I mean, we personally, we, we, we like it when, you know, he moves within the pocket, yeah. you know, <laughs> and so he does a great job with that, um, so we know where he's going to be most of the time, but, you know, obviously every once in a while he shows, he shows his legs and he will, he will take off and uh, gain, you know, a good, good chunk of yardage every once in a while. So One of my favorite moments was, it might have been the Wheaton game, it might have been the week after, but he had like an 18-yard scramble, but he spun out of a tackle. Oh. And when he got back up, I've never seen the kid more pumped yeah. up in his life. <laughs> but he was just so excited about it. Yeah. He yeah. can move a little bit. That's where uh, the name Brock Vick came from. <laughs> uh, Coach Williams coined that. I think it's good. He also has another nickname. Is it... Peanut. Peanut. Yeah. I think Monte gave him that one. Yeah. I don't please, know where that's Please about. explain the origins of this. <sighs> I think he has a head like a peanut. I don't really know. I think that's what it was. Yeah, I mean, you have to peanut ask Monte. Head. I'm not. I've heard a different version. I heard because he eats peanuts whole. What? Yeah. Maybe. Wow. <laughs> Maybe he does. I, yeah. I, I haven't mean, heard that. That might no, be it. Yeah. My Maybe. first thought was because it's like peanut butter, like <laughs> Brock, like Brock, oh yeah, Brock, yeah, like, yeah. Oh, you know, yeah. that could be it. I that could be I'm it. That sure. could be it. I couldn't tell it's, you. It's definitely an Amante question. So there's like three different reasons why he could be called Peanut. Yeah. This is fascinating. <laughs> um, I guys, I want to talk about the end of the season because Elmhurst is coming up next, and obviously this is the, the regular season finale, um, and then hopefully the playoffs. So as you guys kind of go towards the end of the season, we'll go to Joe for this. Um, how are you guys preparing? How are you trying to make sure that you guys are getting ready for hopefully what's to come? Um, uh, our offensive coordinator, Coach Spencer, you know, he always tells us to focus on us, you know, make sure we're getting better as a group each week. Um, focus on our technique and what we're doing so that we're ready to play each week. Yeah. And that's basically our main focus going in from here on out. And then, obviously, senior day, potentially the last time we play at Benedetti Worldly Stadium, hopefully not the last time, but was it a pretty emotional day, pretty, pretty fun? Oh, yeah, definitely. It was probably one of, definitely one of the most fun games I've been a part of. Yeah. Um, I mean, there was definitely some emotions flying with, like, parents and, you know, players, uh, you know, last regular season home game of our careers. Um, and uh, it was just, I mean, it was so fun. Carthage is a good team. Yeah. You know, they're a really good team. Uh, their defense is very good. And just to have that kind of performance for us um, out there and, you know, have a performance on the offensive line and for Austin, um, have that kind of day, I mean, it was just a great feeling. It's a great senior day. It just, yeah. Yeah. just the whole atmosphere definitely. was awesome. Uh, you guys ready for the quick hits? Yeah. Three questions that have nothing to do with football. Uh -huh. um, first one I want to ask you guys is, what is your favorite season? As the temperature starts to plunge, what's your favorite season? Joe, we'll go to you first. Uh, fall. Fall? Fall is my favorite season. Is it football, football related? Yeah. Yeah, sweatshirt weather. Yeah. I have a lot of sweatshirts. So this like is like that. perfect right oh, now. Yeah. Love it. Yeah, uh, I would also say fall um, yeah. for football, for watching football and for playing football. Um, you know, just... I love both, so I yeah. love doing, and watching, and uh, playing. So, um, I mean, other than that, though, I'll throw in spring, my birthday season, though. There so you go. that's always a that's always a good one, though. That's fair. <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> uh, second question. We'll start with Alec for this one. <laughs> is a hot dog a sandwich? <laughs> um, a hot dog is not a sandwich. Um, <laughs> 
uh, it is not one. Uh, I've never heard of it being <laughs> one, but I mean, I guess I respect your opinion if it, if it is one, if you do think that. Uh, Joe? Uh, no, I never <laughs> thought of it as a sandwich. Um, I like my food and I don't consider that a sandwich at all. So here's the thing, is a sub a sandwich? Yes. Yes, absolutely. So a bun, a hot dog bun is shaped the same way as a sub roll is and hot dog is meat in a similar fashion if you put say roast beef on a sandwich i i have to say that like i guess i guess this what consists of a sandwich is like the whole thing kind of like together i guess you know like how about a chili dog with cheese no no (laughs) i'm not going to convert you guys am i no probably not (laughs) Yeah. We're, we're offensive linemen, you know, we're pretty experienced in food, um, so. <laughs> Who does the most damage in the cafeteria? That's not a quick hit, I'm just honestly curious. I, I think it's, it, well actually, you, you actually eat a lot for. Me or, uh, I don't know, me or Alec, yeah. Yeah, yeah. probably. Yeah. Probably, probably us too, yeah. All right. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> um, yeah. Switching gears, not, not food related. You win a million bucks. Oh boy. What's the first thing you do? A million dollars. Uh, I'll buy my parents um, a gift. I'll buy my mom something. My mom like a some kind of jewelry, or um, or I don't know, maybe even pay off their mortgage or something. I don't know. I'll probably put it towards my parents. That's awesome. Um, I'm a, I'm buying a car. Yeah, yeah I'm I'm going for me. You'll give your parents a ride. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll I'll help them out a little bit later, but car comes first. Guys, thanks so much for hopping on. Congratulations on an amazing senior day, and uh, good luck at Elmhurst. Thank, Thank you. you. Coming up next, we'll go to the Cardinal Corner. We'll be right back on the Red Zone. This Red Zone segment is sponsored by Belgio's Catering. 2017 was among the deadliest and costliest hurricane seasons on record. North Central took notice, and the men's and women's basketball teams sprung into action. The NCAA um, made an initiative that if you wanted to try to raise some money uh, for hurricane relief, you could file a waiver, find an opponent, and uh, put something together. Um, and so, you know, we, we heard about it, learned about it, wanted to do our part to help. Um, so we contacted a couple of coaches. They were on board, and, and here we are tonight. Coach Michelle Roof and Todd Raritan and their staffs agreed to exhibition games with Concordia University, Wisconsin. The goal? Play with the proceeds from attendance going to charity. This is the least that we can do. You know, we're, we're hanging out here, doing what we love, and getting to play basketball. And, you know, so many times we take that for granted. And uh, tonight, to be able to to go out and, and play and play the game that we love and uh, you know do it in front of a crowd and raise some money to help people you know that need it, it was a, a really big opportunity for us. From an administrative standpoint, Assistant Athletic Director of Facilities, Events and Recreation James Cluckhone sees the event as reinforcement in the college's mission. Try and give back, try and help others, and uh, you know I think people really you know take that to heart. And uh, it's great to see people showing up and uh, you know getting ready for the season. You know everyone's excited for the season to get started, so. Uh, you know, that's a big part of it, and uh, you know, come back and help other people. In total, $1,170 raised. We're taking that, uh, we're going to donate all that, uh, the funds for all the, uh, the gate to that. That will go to the American Red Cross, and it'll be uh, designated specifically for the Hurricane Relief Fund. Overall, a fun night full of basketball inside Gregory Arena to help hurricane victims. You get a crowd, you get a fun event going on, people enjoy it, you know, it's exciting, so you know, that's, uh, that's worth it. Welcome back into the Red Zone and to close out the show, Sports Information Director Clark Tusher. And Clark, I want to start with a national champion, Division Three uh, champion, the triathlon team. Uh, yeah, uh, first time that uh, that particular championship has been awarded, which is uh, well, one of the reasons we got into triathlon is because we thought we'd be able to be competitive in it right away. And uh, you know, certainly that appears to be the case. You know, a team national championship, uh, Grace Miller with an individual national championship. Uh, you know, first uh, championship in a women's sport at North Central since 1983. Wow. Uh, definitely, uh, you know, a long time coming, something we're very happy to see and uh, uh, looking forward to being able to, to celebrate during the winter term on a, on a more formal basis at some point. From a championship team to a championship hopeful, let's go to men's cross country. They're going to be competing at regionals, and we've talked about them almost on a weekly basis, just how unbelievable they are. 
But what are they doing right now? How are they trying to ensure that they stay healthy and make sure they're, they're ready for the national meet? They're, they're really trying to stick with their routines mm -hmm. and, and really treat it like they've treated their training, like they've treated other races. Um, you know, regardless of the fact that obviously the stakes are higher, um, but you're really trying to keep yourself in the mentality of, well, we've, we've done this the same thing that we're doing every day to the, through the season. We're doing the same things over and over and over again. Uh, and that's, that's the routine that they will carry through to nationals. They're really trying to shut out a lot of what we're talking about right now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll have a chance to view that later, but, um, yeah, they're really they're just kind of just looking within and, and focusing on, on doing the same things that they've been doing. So uh, that's an approach that certainly has worked uh, in the past. So only for uh, 50 years, only though. only for 52 years. Uh, <laughs> My so, apologies. So we'll uh, <laughs> we'll uh, we'll uh, let them keep doing that. And uh, and uh, we, we're looking forward to some positive results once again. Let's get to basketball, which just kicked off its season, not technically an exhibition game. Uh, but it was for charity, which is the, the focus of our feature this week. But let's get to the actual results because the women almost won. They had a buzzer beater three. Um, and then the men also won, which is it's a nice way to start the season and get into kind of a more competitive play. Uh, yeah, you know, you're still about you know, 10 days away from the start of the actual season. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was a good opportunity to get kind of a dress rehearsal and see how people are going to respond uh, in a game type situation. Um, and, you know, I think there's definitely some positives and negatives that they took from that. Uh, so there's, uh, you know, definitely they should have the team's full attention for those 10 days as they prepare to get ready uh, for, for regular season competition. Uh, but, you know, as you mentioned, it was a charity event. We ended up raising, you know, $1,100 or so for, wow. for hurricane relief for the Red Cross. So uh, we're definitely grateful for people to coming out and, uh, and checking that out. And uh, we hope we, we gave them something entertaining to look at. It's pretty entertaining from <laughs> what I saw. Um, let's go to the next sport, which is wrestling, which is early in the season. Uh, we'll have a chance to actually carry them on our airwaves next Wednesday. Pumped to see that. But uh, how are they progressing in the early part of the year? Well, they only had one uh, competition so far. They had a dual match against McMurray last week mm -hmm. and then won 55 to nothing. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> you know, the, the, the maximum possible in a duel is 60 points. So they, they ended up uh, you know, with a pretty pretty impressive showing to They've begin with they, to they seem to be ready to go they've actually <laughs> got a couple of guys that are still uh in competition with the football team mm -hmm. that they're waiting until that season's over uh before they get them but uh, certainly some capable guys filling in right now they're going to go to their first tournament of the season this weekend over in, in indiana at trine university uh, it'll be the first chance for the majority of the team to wrestle so uh they're, they're still kind of getting the season started right now and then how about this bowling First chance we've had to talk about this brand new program, and they're in the middle of their season now. Uh, yeah, you know they're a couple of weeks in. Uh, they went to a tournament hosted by Valparaiso University last weekend. Uh, one of our bowlers, Melissa March, uh, is a freshman from Plainfield. She finished fourth in the individually in the field, made the all-tournament team, which is the first kind of individual honor for the you know, the history of that program, which yeah. is a good thing to have. Uh, you know, we've got uh, just a, a smaller team, only about six members. Uh, and uh, you know, most of the, uh, the better bowlers in that group are freshmen, so it's a good kind of a nucleus to build around. Um, most of their season will happen after the new year, but they're getting you know, about four or five weeks of competition in right now. Uh, and and you know, kind of you know, progressing their way into collegiate competition. Obviously, it's the first time for all of them to be yeah. at, at competing at that kind of level. So it's going to take a little bit of time, but uh, well, we like where they're at so far. All right, we'll wrap up this segment with this. It's been a topic of debate all day. Clearly, yeah. Yeah. Is a hot dog a sandwich? Uh, no, I don't think it is. <laughs> I think you're, you're looking at, uh, you know, in terms of uh, composition and construction and, and consumption, you're, uh, it's, just a different, it's just a different food item. So I understand there's, it's a passionate you know, topic of discussion in this country. A lot of people coming down <laughs> on one side or another. You know, it, it, you know, people are all taking sides, but uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think you can, uh, I don't think you can count it. You actually joined the minor, the majority today. We have four no's, and I think I'm the only yes. So I have some work to do to try and push you guys to the other side. Well, you know, you're gonna just like uh, you know most other issues in this country, you're gonna have to present some compelling evidence <laughs> to get some people to change their minds. Clark, thanks for stopping by, and uh, we'll see you next week. You got it. That's a wrap for the Red Zone. Final regular season game on the road at Elmhurst. That kickoff is at 1. We'll have the highlight following the game. Thanks so much for tuning in, everybody. I'm Kevin Jackman, and this has been the Red Zone.